This is actually a memory foam short queen. I actually joke all the time and say it's for a short king. So I opted to not have solar panels so that I could actually use my entire roof rack. That is something that I required because I like to take photos in very remote places. Hey, what's up guys? My name is John Weatherby and this is my van, The Weather Beast. Come check it out. Welcome inside guys. So right now we are in the kitchen area in the van, AKA also the living room because it's all such a small spot. But yeah, this is a cool countertop here. It's one of my favorite features in the van. It's matte black and super light. It's called Phoenix. So they actually use this inside homes as well. But this was something that I opted for, which I really like over marble because I tried to keep the weight as minimal as I could to do off-roading and stuff like that. So the sink area here is, you know, pretty standard. I got the regular faucet, but also filtered water as well. As far as water goes, I have 30 gallons, also a 10 gallon hot water heater. So the way it works is it cycles 10 gallons into the hot water tank. So I can technically hold about 40 gallons of water when I fill up. So that lasts usually about a week if I'm in the van full time. This was a really nice a custom uh, countertop butcher block that I had made by a friend, the Wood Slayer. Check him out on Instagram. Really talented guy. So we have an isotherm fridge. This is not the biggest fridge. If I could go back, I probably would have done better fridge freezer combo. This is kind of a smaller freezer section here, but it works. I don't have any type of permanent cooktop. I don't do a lot of cooking when I'm traveling. I just usually eat out, eat on the go. So I have outlets up here. These are all AC power. So basically I turn on my inverter if I want to use these guys here. And underneath coming down here, we have some storage under the sink. This is usually where I keep all the food. I actually am staying with some family right now and kind of reorganizing the van. So I don't have a lot of the stuff in here that I normally do. And then on the back side of this, it opens up, folds down to a table and allows access to the pantry from the outside. All right, moving to the other side of the van, this is technically the living space workspace area. So I do have a nice bench seat here that can seat a few people. The front seats actually rotate as well. So the idea with this table actually was to be kind of a centerpiece between the bench and also the captain's chairs in the front. So, you know, you could essentially eat together with two or three or maybe even four people. So this is a Laguna table and basically, you know, you can raise or lower it. You could take it off. It's actually on a mount and that mount could also be positioned here if you wanted to have it over the bed. So this is the work area essentially. And then I have a closet here. This is my cutlery here. And then I keep clothing. Uh, shirts in the top two drawers, usually roll them up and we have some storage up top. Also have some storage underneath the bench as well. And then we have some more drawers behind me. And one of them actually acts as a step to get on the bed. So this is the inverter here from Victron. This is the multi-control unit. And if I wanna turn on the inverter to use any of the AC appliances or turn on the hot water heater, then I just click this on here. So then I also have my lighting control over here. So it's really cool for you know just creating a cool mood if i turn these lights off and it's dark i can you know have some kind of ambience in here and change the colors depending on what mood i'm in so i got the van in 2020 but i had been in the market for a van for a while before that so i was looking for a 4x4 sprinter and i found this one for a decent deal so I originally started working it on myself. I stripped everything out of the van and started to put down flooring and stuff. And I realized that I am not handy and it was gonna turn out terrible and take forever. But the gentleman that actually got me into van life had a company building vans. And I eventually just reached out to him and decided to work with him and have it professionally built. That was a very great decision. Three years later, we're here, everything is still in one piece and almost just as new as when I got it. And I've been full-time and part-time throughout that time, but mostly lately I've been part-time in the van and I rent an apartment for a few months at a time and store the van as well. So here is the bed. This is actually a memory foam short queen. I actually joke all the time and say it's for a short king terrible joke but anyways we have the fan up here so this is on the remote control for the 
fan up top. Also, the thing above me is an air conditioning unit. So this is the passenger model of the Sprinter. So this is rear AC for passengers. So this is actually really handy in the summer when it's hot or when I'm in the desert, but it's only functional when the van's on. I did install a remote starter for the van so I can actually start it from my bed. If I wake up super hot, I can just crank the van on. It has like a timer, like a 30 minute timer. So it'll just shut off in 30 minutes. I can go back to sleep. I also have the heater control as well back here. So if I wake up cold, I can flip the heater on. The diesel heater is located under the passenger seat. So up top, we have some more storage. I originally, you know, just had this empty and I would just fold clothes up there. But then I found, you know, putting these little bins up here that I, I bought like home goods or something helped keep things more organized. Back here, I have a kind of marine style fan. That's really nice as well. Between that fan and this fan, as long as it's like a decent temperature outside, I can sleep comfortably again. If I really need to, I can crank this on. The flares themselves were an add-on for the van. So if you're familiar with Sprinter vans, they're a little more narrow. So for somebody to sleep sideways, basically, you can extend the width of the van with the flares. This is an awning style window by Turn Overland. Really love this, it's super thick. This is a insulated cover for it that also has a screen so I can open it up and use the screen to keep bugs out and get a nice breeze. But the awning style is really nice because you can open it in the rain. No water's gonna come in, it's just gonna bounce off the window and roll off. So for anybody that's interested in getting into van life, I would really just suggest researching all the different options. I went through all the different options as far as what would check the most boxes for me. And I settled on a van for a few reasons. One was that, you know, you can just jump straight from the cab into the back. Also, this specific van being four by four and lifted with an upgraded suspension and tires and everything, that is something that I required because I like to take photos in very remote places beautiful landscapes that require some off-road driving to get to them. But I would just recommend, you know, researching, going through YouTube and watching a lot of videos and, you know, just figuring out all your different needs and what checks the most boxes for you. All right, so we're on the outside of the van now. This is the passenger side. Some cool features for this side would probably be this cubby hole. This is really handy for hiking boots, workout shoes. This kind of keeps them away from the inside. Also the table, like I mentioned, folds down here. This is nice if I want to, you know, put the induction cooktop here, or the air fryer or something, plug it in right here. I can do some cooking outside, access the pantry as well. Super handy. Also, we have the side rails or the side steps. These actually have saved my van on a few occasions. So highly recommend decking your van out with armor all the way around. This is the garage area here. We've got plenty of extra storage. Got the covers on the back from Quest Overland. Like I said, insulated. Highly recommend these specific covers. I've researched them a lot and I do believe that they make the best ones. And on the back we have some massive drawers. These are also on 500 pound sliders. So I store a lot of outdoor equipment if you're just hanging out, I mean, there's a table here in the back that's really nice for setting up the cooking. Again, there's plugs here if I need to plug in, but it's really nice to have. So then in the back, we have access to the water tank so I can you know, see how much water I have. Also drain the water tank if I need to. Then there is a shower system here as well. I have a mount that attaches to the window here and I have a curtain system on magnets that I can actually post up to the top corners of the doors and I can shower if I need to. Back here, also some shoe storage, have the fuses for all the electrical system here, and then the switch to kill the whole power system. If I'm gonna travel or something and leave the van for a little bit, I can turn off the in-house battery system. So back here we have the electrical system. I have 400 amp hours of lithium batteries and also a DC to DC charger. So this has been sufficient for me. I do a lot of driving. I don't stay in one place very often. So I drive enough regularly to recharge the system. And I've never really, you know, run out of power or even gotten below 
75%, even charging my laptop, camera gear and everything. So I opted to not have solar panels so that I could actually use my entire roof rack. It's really nice to just hang out up there, you know, lay down up there, watch the stars. I even get up there with my tripod and take photos sometimes as well. All right, so thanks guys, that's my van. I appreciate you stopping by and checking it out. So you can find me on Instagram. That's where I spend most of my time, probably too much time actually. My handle is where is Weatherby. Also on YouTube as well, teaching photography. I have online courses. I do in-person workshops in Iceland multiple times a year as well. If you're interested in learning photography or going to Iceland, then definitely reach out to me through my social channels.